Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, so at least starting with this video, we're going to show you how we have the similarity between complex numbers and polar coordinates. Matter of fact, we're going to actually learn how to deal with complex numbers, how to add, subtract, multiply, take the square, take the square root of complex numbers in terms of polar coordinates. And we can see the similarity and how we can actually very nicely deal with those types of numbers imaginary numbers in polar coordinates. So to refresh our memory what imaginary numbers are is that numbers that have a real part along the horizontal axis or what's called the real axis and they have an imaginary part which is along the vertical axis called the imaginary axis. And so every imaginary number has a real part or I should say every complex number has a real part and an imaginary part. The imaginary part is a number multiplied times i where i is the square root of negative 1. So since i is equal to the square root of negative 1, that is of course not a real number. You don't have such a thing as the square root of negative 1. So therefore, this is what we call the imaginary part of the number and this is called the real part. The real part would be like an integer or a fraction or a decimal or something like that. Okay. So we have the real axis, we have the imaginary axis, so we can then assume that there's a, if there's a number represented right here by this dot, this dot represents a number, and so that number would then correspond to a real part, which is A in this case, that falls directly down below on the real axis, and then if we draw a line from the point over to the vertical axis, that then would be the value of the imaginary part. Now let's say we have two... Uh, complex numbers. Let's say z1, and typically z is the letter used for complex numbers. z1 is equal to 1 minus 2i. That means it has a real part equal to 1 and an imaginary part equal to minus 2. We have a second re uh, complex number which has a real part equal to 3 and an imaginary part equal to 4. What happens when we add those two together? z1 plus z2. When we add them together, we add the real parts together. 1 plus 3 is equal to... Oh, I did this wrong, didn't I? 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. Good thing that I checked. And of course, then we add the imaginary parts together. Minus 2i plus 4i is equal to plus 2i. So what does that look like on our graph? Well, it definitely is not going to look like this. We're going to have to correct that. So what that means is that we're going to represent the sum of z1 plus z2. Then the real part would be equal to 4, and the imaginary part would be equal to 2i. So let's get rid of this here. So that means the real part is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. Imaginary part is 2, right there. So that means that if we add the two together, right here, that would be this point, and that is z1 plus z2, which is equal to 4 plus 2i. So that's how we traditionally work with complex numbers. When we add them together, we can see we add the real parts together to get 4, the imaginary parts to get plus 2i. Now, how can we do that in polar coordinates? Well, if you're interested, stay tuned and we'll have some, view, some, some videos showing you how to do that with polar coordinates.